I'm not from a wealthy family, I'm not from a wealthy background, but I, I fought to have a better life. Welcome back to my channel, guys. If you have not yet subscribed, then I'm gonna give you a minute right now to actually sit down, think about your life, and then subscribe to the channel. So, Welcome back to another episode of the Black Excellence series. And as always, we're gonna hop straight into it. Sir, how are you today? Good, and how are you? I'm good. So, you know, tell us, who are we sitting with today? Who are you and what do you do? Um, my name is Ashley Kumifelo Rapala, um, also known as Shimza. I'm a DJ, producer, entertainer, uh, businessman, Olof. philanthropist. Right. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm from Tembisa in the East Rand. Um, it's a township, but yeah, I'm, I'm from there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you are a world known, world recognized and respected DJ. So let's start from the beginning. You know, how did you get yourself here? I think it was from the love of music and obviously looking at what's going on in the industry, learning a lot, um, observing of what's happening around me and obviously looking at the business side of things, you know, which I think was the most important one because um, passion alone doesn't pay the bills. You know, mm. we need to always go out there, learn a lot, uh, network with people, um, don't be stupid about it, you know. It's not all about the clicks and clam. There's a lot of work that goes in there. Uh, mm. I have just been consistent ever since I started. Now, a lot of uh, celebrities and whatnot, they find themselves in the trap of spending money excessively, not thinking about the future, not thinking about the business, as you say. Yeah. How did you find yourself in a position where you're thinking about the business, you're making business moves, and it's not just about making music or living the lavish life? I think, you know, there's a difference between spending, spending money and, and using money. I think they, they, there's a huge difference there, you know. Spending money is just yeah, spending, you mm. know, on, on stuff that won't benefit you. But also, you can also think about it in a different way. Some people spend money to make money and yeah. some use money to make money. Mm -hmm. So I think I went with both because I do spend money um, to make money and I do use money to make money. So mm. I'll spend money on clothes that are, that are going to make me look good when I go and perform mm. and then I'll use money to buy assets you know so the like the spending is there you know the spending is there but it's all about balancing it and making sure that it, it works for your career you know mm. and I think I'm very fortunate to be in a, in a space that um, that needs us to look good so I've got an excuse to right. spend money on clothes you know <laughs> Uh, but I don't drink alcohol. I don't. I don't spend on on smoking or all of that stuff. You know. So everything that I do is primarily for my career. You know, it's interesting. There was this. This is book rich dad poor dad. I'm sure you've heard yeah, of it. And, okay. and they made me think of it when, when you said um, you use money to make money. And in the book, they say you don't work for money, but you use money, money you must work for you. for you. Yeah. And that's what you're applying in your career. Yeah, basically. You know, because I mean. I, I, I make some money from gigs, you know, like from my DJing, my, my fee is, is okay, you know, it's not, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that much, but it's, it's okay, you know, but I use the same money to create my festivals, mm. you know, like I've got my one man show in Tembisa in December, which I use my, my bookings money to put up because I understand the return is going to be higher. Mm. So I use my money and my money works for me in some way. You know, but sometimes, you know, you go overboard, man. You sometimes want to spoil yourself, and it's okay. But you must know that after that, you need to, like... Mm, you know there's back. a problem when you start spoiling yourself every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's no problem if you can afford that. You mm. know? But you need to make sure that you come back stronger. You must put right. in the work, yeah. So, speaking of your one-man show, where did that idea come from? What made you say, okay, I want to do that? What made you pick location? And how have you managed to make it a success every single year? Um, I want to mention what came about from the urge of investing in my brand, one, um, to creating a platform that could one day like generate um, some recognition, one, mm. two, and obviously make some money, you know, and it's like a business trajectory, you know, where you mm. start very slow, you lose money, um, you learn, 
you start making the right decisions, you start booking the right acts, you know, looking at what's working and what's not working, what's right. benefiting you, what's not benefiting you, learning how to speak to sponsors in the private sector, learning how to speak to government, you know, and making mm. sure that the event speaks to the funding platforms that the government has for events, you know. And with that, I'm trying so hard to like teach a lot of people and, and share my story so that a lot of people can see that you start somewhere. You, know, you don't just wake up and you have a sold out show at, at mm. Zone 6. That's not, that's not sustainable, you know. You need to take baby steps because I think even people appreciate it when they see something start from scratch. Right. And up. You are in the DJ field primarily and there is a lot of competition in that field. You know, there are DJs left, right and center. What differentiates you? What makes people pick Shimza over someone else? I don't follow trends. I don't follow trends. I'm just doing me, mm. you know, and I think that authenticity um, shows itself, you mm. know, and people can see that this guy is not a, he's not a chance taker. Right. You know, he's there, he knows his story. This is what he's doing and that's it, you know, because I think a lot of people get lost in the trends mm. that are popular at some time. They jump onto this, they jump onto that, they do this, they do that. And you lose people because if someone likes you for a specific sound, a specific way you look, they've got a sentimental liking to, to whatever it is that they got drawn to you by, you know? Right. And if you're going to change that, obviously, suddenly you might have people falling off, you know? You spoke about the importance of your brand and you have to approach sponsors, governments and acquire funding. How do you maintain a positive brand image? I don't do stupid things, man. Some things are choices. You choose if you want to fight with people on Twitter. You know, some things are mistakes, yes, but it's choices. And I've, I've chosen to, to, to stick in my lane and not try and change who I am because right. I feel like I've always been like this ever since I grew up, you know. But at some point, you need to have, like, have a, a thick skull Mm -hmm. and, and grow like a thick skin and and don't take shit from other people because that's also a problem you know you also choose how you you want to react to it you know you mm. block it out or you entertain it you know? right but sometimes on twitter i i sometimes go off and 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 give back the the bad stuff to people so that mm. people know that there's a boundary once you jump that it's a one-on-one, -on -one, right? Because you know, right. people just take advantage. So, it's it, it has always been about choices. You know? Which point in your career did you realize that? Oh snap, I'm famous. When did it really hit you that? Oh, you have fans. I I, I don't even I don't even think about that. Right? I think a famous person or a celebrity would be driving around in dark windows, making sure that they're always wearing glasses and they're always dressed up. Right. Um, they wouldn't go to a pick and pay, you know, but I do like I go to a pick and pay and, and buy my own stuff. I live a normal life, mm. you know, and I think I sometimes see it in people in the shops and they they sort of get confused, you know, they're like, right. why, why is this guy at a spa, you know, and I'm like, I'm here to do my groceries. I need to eat, yeah. you know. Where um, else must you do your groceries? Exactly, <laughs> you know, um, I don't go around, yeah, dressed up every day because mm. you know, I've never been that guy. And I like living a normal life. You know, I go to Tembisa every every now and then. Mm. Um, I chill in the corner, talking to normal people. Like even with the people that are from my my hood, you know, when I see them, I don't make them feel like I'm this guy that's right. not popular because. The difference between me and you is that more people know me, mm. you know, but at the same time, we're both human. You say you live a normal life and that's how you conduct yourself, but you know, Oksanaya, people know you and you're in the public eye. How do you deal with public attention on your personal life and people thinking they have a right to you, your life, and to attack you? It's your choice, man. If you want to be involved, be involved, you know, but I'm not going to live my life because I'm worried about you. I'm not going to do or not do stuff because I'm scared that you are going to judge me for my choices in my life. Like the other time I lost my car, you know, 
people had all these different opinions and and theories and shit you know and i'm like you probably don't even own a bicycle but you want to have an opinion on my life you know mm. that i worked hard for you know you want to tell me yeah or like like tomorrow they might steal your pen and you right. f- you'll feel the same pain you lose your phone tomorrow you know do you know how how painful it is losing your phone you know when you search your pockets and your your face when you realize yeah. that it's not there you know it's 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 the same pain when mm-hmm. you lose a car because you feel violated it's like losing your phone yeah Uh, well, I, I, a bit more painful. No, I, I, I had both experiences, mm. and I'm like, I almost cried when I lost my phone in the club. What advice do you have for the person who wants to be in your shoes, or you know, follow the career path you have? Be yourself. Be yourself, and just stay true to yourself. Do what makes you happy. Don't try and mimic anyone else, because every, like everyone has their own path. You mm. know, that's. That's it. Do you and stay there. You know, if you believe in something, just continue. Be persistent and just keep doing it. Right. Yeah. So we're sitting here. We're doing the Black Excellence series. I want to ask you now. According to you, what is Black Excellence? Black Excellence is is. I think it's it's not even it shouldn't even be directed at individuals like myself maybe you know it's a black thing you know i come from a family where my dad passed on when i was like six years and i was raised by a single parent my mom you know and i'm not from a wealthy family i'm not from a wealthy background but i i fought to have a better life you know i fought to have everything that i have you know so and i think as you progress as you as you see yourself living in a house that you would have loved to live in uh, which ordinarily would be like a house that you got from a class fund right. a pound from your great great grandfather you know um, working and and achieving that i think for me is is black excellent right? mm. yeah something i like to do with all my interviews is i have a bowl here of tongue twisters and you have 30 seconds to pick one yeah. read it and recite it as fast as you can okay cool you ready In three, two, one, go. Yo, Susie works in a shoe shine shop where she shines. Where she shines, she sits, and where she sits, she shines. Fast up, fast up. Susie works in a sh- shoe shine shop where she shines the yo, oh, where she shines. This and where she shines, she sits, and where she sits, she shines. Susie works. Ah, That's yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're gonna give much. you one more go. Come on, I okay. believe in you. Okay, cool. Um, are you timing this? Oh, the timing is even finished. You want to start again? You can start again. <laughs> Let's try it. <laughs> okay. All right. In three, two, one, go. Susie works in the shoe shine shop where she shines. Where she shines, she sits. And when she sits, she shines. Susie works in a shoe shoe shine shop. Where she shines, she sits, and she and where she sits, she shines. Hi, <laughs> that one didn't go. That one didn't go. Yeah, it's too much. <laughs> What you have? Third, twelve seconds. Okay. Susie works in a shoe shine shop. Where she shines, she sits, and where she sits, she shines. Hi. Okay. Four seconds. That's good. Yeah. Well, <laughs> What's up? This is your boy Shamza. I'm a DJ promoter. Uh, producer, philanthropist, and you're watching the Black Excellence series with Benita Daniel. Perfect. That's it for today, guys. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to see more, then leave a comment, and I'll do best. Peace and love, guys.